What's going on? It's Arian Foster. You're tuning in to Hot New Hip Hop. I don't have like a cool story for that actually. Like uh, Bobby Fino, I, I don't feel like Arian Foster is it's an artistic sounding name. Um, so I felt like I needed like a stage name. And so, I mean, rap rap has stage names, you know? And so I felt like I needed one that fit me. And um, I don't know where Fino came from, honestly. It just felt good. I don't know, I don't know, I have no idea, it just feels good. But Bobby uh, was from, uh, Bobby McFerrin. He's one of my favorite artists of all time. And uh, he, he's known for that Don't Worry Be Happy song, but if you dig in his catalog, he's like one of the most talented, He's a vo- he's a vocal virtuoso, so um, when I when I I just I, I snatched that 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 swag from him. I, I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it's kind of like a it's like a little West Coast, and so we kind of took that on. I grew up with, like with lowriders and heavily uh, uh, Latino influence uh, with the essays. I grew up around a bunch of essays, and um, so I bumped I bumped stuff like Pop, Snoop, uh, Dre. So I was real West Coast heavy. Um, uh, but ironically, the shit, what made me fall in love with hip hop was the underground backpack scene in New York. So like I used to listen to like Wordsworth, the Lyricist wow. Lounge, and Talib Kweli, like okay. his early stuff. Um, Reflection Eternal, uh, uh, Black Star, uh, it was Black Star, Black Star, yeah, with Most Def. Most Def's one of my favorites. So it's like I got a good mix um, of like, kind of like, not pop, but uh, mainstream hip hop with the West Coast and then the underground stuff with the East Coast. I'm more into lyrics and, and message and content, I think. So like, you know, the Coles, the Kendricks, um, you know, I like, I love Drake. Um, uh, so people, that, I feel like people that care about the content that they put out is, is more my more my bag. Um, this is the voice of the youth, right? So the voice of the youth when I was growing up was the gangbang era. And so, that wasn't necessarily a good thing. <laughs> and so I bet you the older cats was, they were looking at us like, what's wrong with these young kids? Cause we were wild too. I used to, we used to do wild, wild shit too, but we just didn't put it on camera. Yeah. Like now it's it's heavy social media influence, which I think it's making it, it's making it snowball, it's making it going faster. Um, so kids are kind of getting caught up in that hype, um, but it's it's for them. It's obviously for them. It's I mean it's not my tale. I, I never knock anybody that puts out any kind of art because you're kind of giving yourself to people, and so it's like I, I I commend people for that aspect of it. It's just it doesn't resonate with me. Right. I mean that's that's the thing about about music, man. Is it's different than I mean I guess it's kind of you can draw a parallel to sports, but it's different in the fact that people are really passionate about music for the fact that. Um, like when I was growing up, the reason why I defend Pac to somebody who doesn't like Pac is because like when I was growing up, I didn't have a lot growing up. I didn't have anything. All I had was like some hope, and Pac provided a lot of that hope. And so like when I'm staring out my window, bumping all eyes on me, and I don't have any food in my fridge, it did something to me to say, you know, when I'm one day I'm gonna get out of these circumstances. So it hit me in a different way. And so that's the beautiful thing about music, though. Like so these kids that are growing up on this, granted they might not draw that deep uh, correlation to the music that they do, but it's still it's a soundtrack to the to the things that they're going through right now. So no matter what, when they're 30, 40 years old, they might look back and say, this probably wasn't the best music ever, but it it, it helped me get through, whatever it is. Like, cause it's, 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 it's fun music, right? So it's like the turn up age where they just, it's all about show and flash. And like, I don't know, I don't know why people act like, like our era, like the era I grew up in, wasn't like that as well. You had the cash money, you had the, the you had- Slick Rick had some of the biggest Yeah, Slick time. Rick, yeah. So it's like, it, it's, it's just, it's just voiced differently. Like, and they don't, I think, the music quality isn't as good as far as like the composition of the instrumentals, things like that. Um, but when I say isn't as good, it's a subjective thing because how can you judge art as good or not good? This is not an objective thing. So people, yeah. So like, I mean, I, it, it isn't to me because I, I value like chord progression. I value like traditional like music notes, things like that. That's what I fell in love with as a kid. I grew up like on Earth, Wind and Fire and things like that. So I value harmonies. I value melodies. I value things like that. These kids don't value that. Does that mean it's not good? No, it just means that's not what they value. Like it's different. We didn't have synthesizers at our disposal when we was growing up. So it's just different. Like I don't knock it. Well, for me, it's because uh, the reason why music is subjective is because it hits everybody in a different way. And so 
I didn't grow up on Jay Z like everybody grew up on Jay Z. I came to Jay Z late, right? So I didn't really listen to Jay Z till like 2009. You, you hear about him, you, you hear his tracks, but I never dug into his catalog till like 2009. Um, and when I did, you know, it changed my opinion. Obviously, I think he's the greatest rapper of all time. Um, Tupac is my favorite of all time, but I think Hov is the best. Um, so when you when I look at Jay Z's catalog, I don't have those same emotions that people do about Reasonable Doubt. I, I it's a like don't get me wrong, I, love, I still bump it to this day. I have it. It's, part, it's really the reason I got title. <laughs> I got title so I could originally get a Reasonable Doubt. So um, and it's still heavy in my rotation. But those emotions that that people have of it, it's not. It doesn't connect with me. So when four 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 drop, um, I'm a thirty year old man, right? So. 444 is is grown up talk. It's 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 dealing with issues that I'm dealing with in my day to day life. When you de- when you talking about finance, you're talking about infidelity. You're talking about real issues that adults go through and how to how to circumnavigate around those things in order to be a successful adult. And so, to me, it was it's more th- well thought out. The young Jay Z is like this young, flashy, hungry, ambitious cat. Where 444 is like. He's a, he's, he's, yeah, he's like, he's like, an, he's like an icon. And so it's like, you're, you're, you're telling me how to be a family man. You're telling me how to be a man. Whereas the young Jay-Z is, is just a wild, reckless, he's a youth. It's not that I'm starting to rap now. I, I've, I've been doing it my whole life. Like, like 10, 12 years old is when I like started making my own music and, 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 and I've been writing since I was like seven, eight. Um, so it's not like a new thing. It's new, I guess, to anybody who has followed my career. But uh, the reason why, it's, like I said, I, I, like you said, I, I've, I've done I've done tracks with like Bum B, like when I was playing. No, it was, it was an awesome it was an awesome experience for me. Um, uh, and and to have him speak highly of my craft is was was dope. So he said that back then. Um, but to me, I respect the art so much that I didn't feel like. I was giving it the love that it needed. Like there was no way I could, I could, I could focus my time on producing a great, what I feel like is a great project, while I was trying to be one of the best running backs in the world, right? So like, you have to be careful what you give your time to. Um, and so now that I've retired, I, it's not, it's, I never stopped making music, but now I got a chance to make music um, in the way that I know that I can. And so that's what I feel like. I hope people it comes across to people. I can rap over a beat. I can write 70 bars over a beat and just rap and give it to people. But that's not representative of of the art that I make, right? So, like, I care about chord progression. I care about uh, the quality of sound. I care about musicianship. So I outsource real musicians. I outsource. I got live strings, like real pianists playing on it, like real stuff that, that to me, is adding to the culture, right? So, like, who knows how it's going to be received? Who knows if anybody's going to even give it a chance? But I feel like if you do give it a chance, um, you'll see that uh, I took it very seriously and I gave it the love that I feel like you should give something that you love because music was my first love before it was football. All right, so Flamingo and Koval is the intersection in Las Vegas where Tupac died. Okay. Yeah, and it was, uh, I, I thought it was a dope little artsy name. And obviously Tupac meant a lot to me and he also meant a lot to the hip hop community. And I feel like hip hop took a hit when he died. You know, hip hop took a hit when Biggie died. Anytime uh, people of that, of that, uh, status and impactfulness, uh, we lose them, especially that young. You know, it, it hurts hurts the game. Um, so it's kind of paying homage to him, but also saying like, you know, this is the start of something as well. And so it's like a metaphor for for the start of of, of where I want to take you know my music. Right. So I don't know if you could put the whole album art like digitally, um, but uh, so the. Rainbow, it's, it's, it's all like metaphorical, but it's, it's very artsy. <clears throat> but the, the metaphor behind it is, is um, light is a spectrum and there's, a, there's an electromagnetic, not to get too geek on you, man, but like light, light is an electromagnetic spectrum. And that's what you see when, rain, like when there's a rainbow or like uh, in a raindrop, you can see the rainbow colors is because light hits it and light travels at different speeds inside of it. And so it's, it's, it's kind of like homage and at my intrigue with science and my intrigue with the universe. That's, that's like the universe background of the cover. Um, and the two hearts, um, the two hearts on the, on the cover, like one is sitting in where my heart is supposed to be and he's sad. 
and, and the other one is on my on my shoulder, and he's free, and he's not where he's supposed to be. So it's kind of like that juxtaposition of what are we supposed to be doing versus what do we want to be doing. That was the that was the thought behind it. I work in conjunction with me and, and two other producers um, that, and we produce pretty much the whole album. And so what I what we do was I mean we understand that you know we're good at what we do. Like I play piano a little bit, and they play piano and they play drums. We understand we're good at what we do, but there's musicians out here that that's what they do do right. And so like we'll lay the template for for a, a, a track, and then we'll outsource musicians. I have the resources to outsource musicians to uh, enhance that, and so that's what we did. And so as far as like a studio session, um, you sit in there and you cook you cook ideas until you feel like you have something. As humbly as possible, I think that's what I'm good at. I'm, I think I'm good at. Um, taking life experiences and putting it into music, but not in a way that will, won't hold your attention. Because I could sit here and talk to you about the electromagnetic spectrum, and you're like, I don't really care. But uh, uh, there's, I think there's ways to convey your passions in a way that you can put it in layman's terms to people where they'll, they'll understand it. And, and, and that, I mean, that, to me, that's, that's the best art. The best art is the artist puts you in their shoes and you see it through their eyes and, th and through their lens. Um, and so that's what I try to do on this album. Yeah, you definitely have to dumb it down, but I think dumb it down gets a, a negative connotation, but it's not the case. Um, one of the best quotes I've ever heard um, was not knowing something isn't dumb, pretending to is, right? So just because you're not knowledgeable, like that's, like that's what ignorance is. Ignorance gets a bad rap too. Ignorance, it just means lack of knowledge. But when I said like, so when somebody tells me I'm ignorant, to me, that's an opportunity to learn. It's not a negative thing. Like, so it's all about perception. So like, um, it's not it's not a bad thing if you don't know something. So, uh, so you have to you definitely have to dumb down your thoughts because nobody's in your head. Like, it all makes sense to you, but you have to make it make sense to everybody else. Uh, <clears throat> there's one called Got It, and it's it's kind of like a celebration of like well the roller coaster ride of like success. <clears throat> so the first part of it. It's kind of like, not necessarily stunting, but it's more like a celebration of like the things that I've accomplished in my life. And then uh, it's the most beautiful transition on the, on the album. And one of the most beautiful transitions I've ever heard. And it wasn't my doing or else I would take credit for it. But uh, we transitioned into this. I did do the, the track following, <clears throat> but uh, it talks about like the woes of success. Like when people have expectations of you, like friends and things like that. Um, so it's just like a, a, a beautiful, beautifully produced, well-written song that I just love.